fromage delivered last week on Kickstarter. But is it delicious or cheesy? Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about a brand new game. I just received my Kickstarter pledge last week for this game from Road to Infamy Games, R2I. It's a game called Fromage. This is a very European style game, as you could tell from the artwork on the box. Uh, Fromage is a worker placement game for between one and four players. There are solo rules in the box. It's a game for kids age 14 and up. I think 12 year olds could sort of figure it out, but there are some advanced strategies here. And uh, it's a game that takes only about 40 to 60 minutes to play, as long as you don't get stuck in some sort of analysis paralysis loop. Let's take a deeper look at Fromage from Road to Infamy. Fromage is a medium weight game in terms of its complexity, uh, the complexity of the rules and the complexity of the strategies. It is medium weight. I've set up only half the board here just so that you can see how this is the deluxe version of the game, which came with a neoprene mat to make it easier to rotate the board. The board itself is meant to be like a lazy Susan. So it's medium weight in terms of its complexity. And what you're trying to do in this game is make cheese and complete orders in order to earn the most prestige points by the end of the game. The game is going to end when one player has placed his last cheese on the board. This game is super modular. So not only are the different quadrants of the board set up kind of randomly next to each other at the start of the game. The quadrants are like little puzzle pieces that you fit together, but they are set up randomly. Each of these pieces also has an insert where you're going to slot in these cards. And these vary by player count, but there are multiple cards for the same player count. So really each game is going to wind up being quite different in terms of how things are set up. Once you've set up the four quadrants of the board, there's also a piece that goes in the center, and this is also kind of set up randomly, and there's so much replayability here. So you're going to have this insert, and that's going to dictate the action pairings that you're going to be able to do on your turn. Each player also has a board like this, and the boards are asymmetric. You're going to have four different buildings that are going to give you different buildings, different abilities once they're built. You're going to have different cheeses that you can make by placing cattle on the board. You can customize things further once you've gotten used to the game because there's a drafting system where you can draft different buildings and put those on your board and give your board different abilities every single game. So players have a board. They've got 15 of these cheese pieces that they can place through the game and they each will have three workers. And you see the workers are placed on these little pieces of cheese. There's three different colors. You've got the orange and the white soft cheese and blue cheese as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see these guys on the little camera here. Um, and the there are two different designs. So there's four colors for the, each of the four players. And there's sort of a, it looks like a male and a female cheese maker, uh, depending on which color you choose. So each player starts with three workers. That's the maximum number you're going to have. That doesn't change. You can't add workers uh, during the game. You've got those three workers. Now, most of the time, you're only going to be able to do two things. Eventually, once you've built the first building on your player board, that gives you an extra action, an extra spot where you can put a worker. But really, most of the time, you're going to be doing two things on your turn. You're going to be getting a resource, and you're going to be making cheese that's going to earn you victory points. You're earning buildings to improve your creamery. You're earning fruit that, where you can make fruited cheese. Cattle, of course, will allow you to make some extra cheese as well. And you can take orders where once you fulfill those orders, that's going to earn you victory points or prestige points at the end of the game. The worker placement is very clever, I think, in Fromage. What you're doing is you're choosing a worker by color. Here in the center where you're gathering resources, the color doesn't matter. So if I place a worker here, you can see that the cheese slices are rounded on one side. So there's only one way that these workers can fit. And then depending on the power of the action, these workers are going to be unavailable for a certain number of turns. Um, because at the end, once everyone's placed their two workers or three, if you, if you have that third action, the board is going to rotate. You only get to reclaim your workers once they're facing you 
again. So you look to see which ones are facing your side of the board and those are the ones you can take. So if I place a worker here, that's going to give me those two buildings that I can put on my board. So until I build something, those buildings are going to sit right over here. And then when the board turns, I don't yet have this worker facing me. I can't reclaim that worker on the next turn. It has to turn a second time before I can get him back. So now this person is facing my way. That's a worker that I'm going to have access to on my turn. It is helpful, well, when we were learning the game, we did find it helpful that the, the pieces are going to point to the quadrant that's going to be in front of you when, they're, when they face you again. So it's just a little mnemonic to help you remember. So uh, if I put a worker over here, that's going to give me three cattle, uh, and I'm going to have access to that worker again when the bistro is facing me. It's going to take three turns before that board comes back around. You're gathering these resources, and there are a couple of these little trays that came in the box, and they sort everything out quite nicely. The deluxe version of the game has wooden uh, screen-printed pieces for those resources, but in the basic version, you're just going to be using cardboard punch-outs. So you've got three different kinds of cattle. There's goats and sheep and cows. You've got three different buildings. They all do the same thing. It's just kind of a nice touch to have some variability there. You've got different berries that you can add to your fruit as well. And then there's a space for your order cards. The orders are really going to earn you some victory points at the end. And to fulfill this order, I'm going to want to make a cheese on the board that's blue, that's got a space with a yellow background. That's going to take three months before that worker comes back to me. Three turns of the board before the worker comes back. So to make a blue cheese, I need to, well, I need to have one of my 15 cheeses left. I'm going to place that on a blue spot with a gold background because that's going to take three turns for that worker to make it. Then I'm going to put my blue worker on top of that. That's the worker who's making the cheese and then that board is going to come around. As soon as I place that cheese with the right color worker on top, I get to complete that order. I don't have to wait until I collect the worker again. That order is complete. I get to put that on the right side of the board and then based on the number of orders that are completed, I'm going to earn some victory points at the end of the game. Each quadrant also has its own unique way of scoring victory points at the end. Uh, and so here you've got the festival and what you're trying to do is create a pathway of your cheeses. So the, the length of contiguous uh, orders that you've fulfilled, the length of contigu contiguous cheese pieces in your, co in your color over here is going to dictate the number of points. And if you manage to get seven, that's going to be 15 points at the end of the game. The fromagerie over here is going to score points based on the number of different shelves you've placed your cheeses on, and you, you might get some extra victory points if you place them on the right-hand side. Over here in the ville, you're going to get victory points by having the majority in a particular zone. So if your cheese color is in the majority, you're going to earn some loyal customers. That's going to get you some victory points at the end of the game. And then here in the bistro, you're earning victory points by just placing different cheeses on different plates here, but if you're able to monopolize one table, that's going to increase the number of victory points that each plate is going to earn you. So if you have a couple of pairs on your board, you're going to earn a lot of points at the end of the game. You'll also earn some points from your player board. So you'll earn points for buildings that you've built. You're going to earn points for uh, gathering fruit, gathering those resources, and in fact these multiply. So if you make a cheese with berries and you make a cheese with jam, at the end the number of berries and jam that you've placed in these baskets is going to dictate, uh, you're going to multiply those together in order to calculate out the points. You'll earn points of course, like I said, for completed orders as well. Now the cattle are unique and you've got four spots here so four times throughout the entire game you're going to be able to make an extra cheese on your turn by placing the cattle in that barn. So on my board if I place two cattle here in that first barn then I can make a, a bronze color uh, of white cheese so I could place that on the board on my turn and that might be valuable for me if I'm really working to get the festival, those adjacent pieces. Do I have a white piece, uh, a white cheese with the bronze background here? I could make this one. That might allow me eventually to join things up. Um, or I could make this one over here, but I need a fruit in my basket in order to make that cheese. 
Most of the time on your turn, you're just going to make one cheese. You're going to gather some resources. Four times during the game, you get to make that extra cheese slice, which advances you further towards the end game. And that's something that players have to watch out for. How many cheeses do, do, the, do their opponents have left? Because the end game is going to come and that's going to dictate, well, do I need to save this cheese until I get to the quadrant I'm working on? Because the quadrants really multiply points by focusing on them. Uh, do I want to save that cheese or do I need to play it now because the game's going to end before my quadrant comes back around again? What skills though are you practicing by playing fromage? Well, you, you learn a little bit of French pronunciation maybe as you're playing through this game. But it is a game about you're budgeting your workers and you do have to think ahead in terms of, well, what resources am I going to get so that I get that colored worker back? in order to put the right cheese that I want to place on my turn. So that's very important. You're budgeting, you're planning ahead, uh, you're trying to maximize those points in, in particular districts or maybe block your opponents from making that pathway, for example, in the festival. Um, you really are planning and budgeting. Uh, there's a lot of resource management here. And when you're doing that, when you're planning ahead and budgeting, you want to be careful about when you place your cattle on the board, for example. Um, we, we really are talking about executive functioning skills, the skills and behaviors that you need to work towards a goal. And of course, the goal here is maximizing points by uh, dominating in a particular area and upgrading your player board. There is also a visual spatial problem solving component here. I, I mean, particularly, maybe obviously in, in the, the festival where you're trying to create that pathway uh, or in the ville where you're trying to earn those victory points by uh, creating a majority. A little bit less so in the bistro where you're trying to match up the tables and place things correctly. I think in the bistro you're really doing more planning to make sure that you get those two uh, cheeses in a row so that you can create the pairs that are going to magnify or multiply your victory points. Um, so th there's some spatial planning and problem solving as well. Primarily though this is a strategy game, a medium weight strategy game, so we're almost always talking about executive functioning skills when we're talking about these games. There's a bit of a working memory component too. You are doing those calculations of trying to figure out what what options are going to maximize your points on a turn. Is, is it very important for me to place my cheese in the district that's facing me or do I need to wait until the next turn or two turns later uh, in order to do that? So there's some working memory. That's Working memory is the whiteboard in your mind where you keep information in order to juggle or manipulate it somehow. Um, so you really are exercising some skills when you play this game despite the fact that the rules are fairly simple. The most complicated part is remembering how you're scoring points in those four different districts. Final thoughts about Fromage. Um, well, first of all, this is a gorgeous game. I really like, I mean, am I interested in a cheese theme game? Well, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't eat cheese. I'm not enthusiastic about cheese. I, I mean, maybe I'm excited about a cheese shop because I'm a Monty Python fan. But otherwise, you know, it's not a theme I thought I'd be interested in. We had a lot of fun playing this game and the artwork is great. These little components, those meeples, the wooden pieces, uh, the fruit and the cattle, um, the, the buildings, they're a lot of fun. They're, they're tactile and they're great looking. The player boards are great looking and they have that, that art style. It does make me, it does feel like a European game, um, maybe even more so than the last real European themed game I played, which is probably Barcelona. So you've got that European feel to it. Uh, it it's got this great art style that I really like. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful game. Uh, the worker placement mechanism here, I think, is unique and clever because, you know, I, I thought when I was reading the rules before I really understood how this Lazy Susan would work, that it was going to be sort of complicated to keep track of, well, what, you know, you're aging a cheese for three months. How do you keep track of that? Do you, do you have timers? Are you marking things on a sheet? No, you're just rotating the board and getting your worker back when they're facing you. That is very clever. And the way that the Lazy Susan with the neoprene mat works, it's great because you've got that little, I don't know if you could tell at the beginning, you've got that little dowel in the middle, that disc in the middle of the board that keeps everything stable on the deluxe version at least. Uh, and the neoprene mat slides super easily. You've even got the puzzle pieces have a little spot for your finger. So very clever, I think, and well thought out 
minor design touches even are well thought out here. In fact, you've got those game trays. I'm shaking them around here. You've got those game trays with lids on top that definitely keep everything stable. Nothing was spilling out or mixing up between the different quadrants of these trays. There's only two of them in the box, but you're putting one on each side of the table. But they've got this opening where the cards are so that it's easy to get, take the lids off. I mean, this is a very well thought out game. I enjoyed the gameplay quite a lot. I am a fan of worker placement games. Uh, I do like that mechanic. Uh, it, this was very unique in terms of the colors of the workers determining where they should go uh, and the way that they're facing determining when you get to take them back. So there's not a lot of workers that you can place. You really have to think about how to manage those and plan ahead to make sure oh, to complete that order and to fill that space in that quadrant. I need to have my blue worker on this turn. Um, th that's a neat strategy and I can't think of it another game like that that I've played that really uh, tweaked the worker the worker placement mechanism in that way. Um, so you've got these great components with great artwork and, and you've got some really clever touches, I think, that uh, elevate this game. Um, and I think my game designer friends are going to really want to try this thing out. Uh, the, the replayability is huge here. Modular player boards with modular inserts and, and a draft uh, of for your player board components. Um, I mean, fantastic. There's so many little touches that add to the replayability. Now, I played this at a small player count. I really want to play a four-player game of this. I feel like the blocking and the strategy there is really going to be magnified uh, when you've got uh, four players around the table trying to play this thing. Um, what a great experience that we had. Now, are there downsides, though, to this fromage? Uh, one is this. Now, I don't mind the simultaneous worker placement. And so for the first few turns when we're learning the game, we're both kind of watching each other place our things. That's fine. Um, it, it takes a little bit longer to do it that way, but I was learning at first with only two players. Um, I haven't played four player yet. I know that some of the folks that I play these games with don't like simultaneous play because then you've got to kind of look and say, well, how did you do that? What are you doing? What's your what's going on here. Now you're not calculating the victory points until the end so you can sort of look at what the other players did. I don't mind simultaneous uh, placement like this. There's still a lot of player interaction because you're blocking spots for the other players and then your workers aren't going to come around right away. Uh, you know I think that this is brilliant in that way but uh, you know I know I have one friend in particular who simultaneous play is something that he doesn't like. And you might get one player who's really paralyzed in, how do I do this? What am I going to do here? I know towards the end, it was very hard to kind of calculate out, how am I going to maximize my points? I can see that my opponents are running low on their cheese and I still have a few left. How can I maximize those points and make sure I have a chance to do well in the game? The only other piece that I could say, and this is a very nitpicky downside to this game, is that the deluxe version does come with that neoprene mat. The box size, I feel like, is just a little too small. So there's a bit of crimping on the mat. Now, you don't notice that when you're playing the game because the board is on top of that mat. It's really just there to make sure that everything can turn smoothly. It's not absolutely, you're not moving pieces on it other than these great big board pieces. And that's not an issue. It slides perfectly well, even if there are little wrinkles in that mat. So it's not a big issue. I'm being super nitpicky here. I really enjoyed Fromage. This was a good time. I can't wait to play it again, honestly. I want to get four players together to try this one out. I have another four-player game that I have to try, but this is one that I really am looking forward to showing my friends who haven't tried this one out yet. Uh, so Road to Infamy Games, you've knocked it out of the park with this one. European feel, clever worker placement mechanism, beautiful artwork and pieces. Um, and it's a game that I'm looking forward to trying again because it's so modular. There's so much replayability here. If you have any questions or comments about Fromage, you can leave them in the comment section below the video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. Previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Blue Sky handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed. So we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.